this is this this is just almost overwhelming. Where do I even start? Hi, I'm Joe, and welcome to Motor City Boatworks. Let's get to work. I want to welcome you back to the Boatworks. I thought this episode I talk about some of the developments in the last month or so insofar as the electrical system for the pocket trawler. I have to admit there's been a pretty steep learning curve as I try to understand what it's going to take to wire up the boat and get all of the different components working together. It requires a lot of planning and if you've never done this sort of thing before there's a lot of things that you got to think about. Frankly it's proven to be a little bit more than I think I'm capable of undertaking. You know, I've been through a number of classes on how to take care of your marine electrical system, how to upgrade components, how to install certain things, but this has become something that, man, I just never anticipated being quite so complicated. And I've been floundering working on this project for quite a while. I started working on the sailboat just to maintain momentum and kind of get things done. All the while, I'm trying to buy components for the pocket trawler, but I don't actually know what to buy. Over the past few months, I've been thinking, what is holding me back? What is it I'm afraid of? I don't want to make a mistake and purchase an electrical component only to find out down the road, if I had bought some other different model, I would be able to do X, Y, and Z. I don't want to throw good money after bad. <gasps> I don't want to make any sort of technical or safety mistakes down the road. There are these reoccurring questions that I've just got to get answered. I've got to know how big my battery bank is going to be. I've got to know how big my engine alternator and the solar panels have to be. I've got to get an understanding of what is my overall electrical budget. I'm still not convinced on the placement for the main electrical panel. I also need some advice on the placement of the batteries. Where are they going to go in the boat? There's all sorts of rules and best practices. I've talked about it before. The ABYC, American Boating and Yachting Council, publishes guidelines on how all these things are to be installed and what exactly they're supposed to be. All of this is kind of overwhelming and it caused me to really start thinking about am I capable of planning and designing and executing my electrical system down the road? I think the answer is I can install it. I think I can execute the plan, but what is the plan? And this has led me to consider hiring a marine electrical consultant, someone to give me some professional advice about my plan, my design, and what it is I should be doing. This is not a particularly sexy topic, but I think it's a necessary lesson. It's something that should be talked about because when you're doing one of these large amateur boat building projects or restorations, sometimes you just kind of get in over your head. This episode is all about what I learned trying to design my own marine electrical system. Let's talk about hiring a professional marine contractor. You know, there's lots of situations that you might find yourself in where you want to hire a professional to do some of the work on your boat. For example, I once hired a company to restore a vintage gasoline engine in my classic 30-foot sailboat. This was a project that was really beyond my skill level and I wanted to have a professional do it so that I knew the engine was 100% good to go. I had to remove the engine myself. It cost me several thousand dollars, but in the end, it was worth it knowing that I had an engine that was rebuilt by a professional. It's a little humbling to realize I just can't do something like this. I got to have someone else kind of tell me, show me the way, maybe even do it for me. So the question becomes, where do you find someone to help you with this? Where and how do you go about picking your marine contractor? In my case, a marine electrician who's going to help me design a system. The process is just like hiring a car mechanic, a plumber, or an electrician for your house. You gotta find someone who matches your budget, someone who has the expertise to be able to do the job you need. You've gotta find someone who's gonna to listen to your questions and bring you through the process. They've gotta respect you as a customer. They've gotta have great communication. Any way you look at it, it's gonna be an expense for a system of this size and complexity, anywhere from two to $4,000.
that's just for the design and the advice. I still have to install everything myself and buy all the pieces on my own. If you're like me, you may find it hard to stomach the notion of spending thousands of dollars just to have someone give you some advice on how to hook up your electrical system. I spent a lot of time thinking about this and I just think it makes sense. A professional can give you their advice on the ins and outs of wiring your boat a certain way. They can comment on specific components. They're up to date on the latest technology. They know how things are supposed to work together. In some cases, they are in first-hand contact with representatives from the companies that are making these devices, and they know exactly what's supposed to be done when they're being installed. They can save you from the possibility of installing something incorrectly destroying the very expensive components that you bought, or worse, doing something to destroy your boat down the line. It just makes sense when you're working on one of these larger boat restoration projects that there are some things you gotta leave to a professional. My search for a competent marine electrical consultant led me to Bob Campbell. He owns a marine consulting service. He's been a fixture in the industry for several decades. He designed and wrote the electrical curriculum for the Annapolis Sailing School, a course that I had previously gone through. Bob is trying to retire. He takes on projects on a case-by-case -case basis. I'm very fortunate to have his advice. Here with me. So, hey, Bob, good morning. How are you? Let me, uh, le let's talk about some of these electrical components and how they're going to go inside the boat. Maybe you can give me your advice on, you know, what you think about the plan so far. Sure, let's go right down your list. All right, fantastic. Let's go. But first, let me remind you that this video is fairly limited insofar as the scope of what I can talk about and how I can explain it. I think I'm going to make some notes and I'll make them available to the workers, those of you who have signed up on my Patreon account. I'll do some detailed write-ups of some of the intricacies of how you go about designing an electrical budget and some of the things I learned about designing the electrical system. There'll be additional information that I make available to the workers, so be sure to check that out. The first thing I learned talking with Bob is that we had to come up with some common terminology to understand exactly what he was talking about and what I was trying to get across. There's a common language about how you describe the parts of the electrical system. You've probably heard me refer to the electrical components, these items that are going to be on the boat using electricity. Well, these are really referred to as loads. They're items that apply a load to the electrical system putting a drain on the batteries. These are all the electrical items on the boat, the lights, the pumps, the electric toilet, the refrigerator, the air conditioning unit. Everything on the boat that uses electricity is a load. And you've got to start by making a master list of all the loads, everything that uses electricity on the boat. And you put that into your electrical budget. Let's start by talking about the electrical budget. From talking to Bob, I quickly learned that you can't do anything until you get your electrical budget kind of nailed down. Well, we've got to consider that the, the size of the battery bank is going to be dictated by all the equipment and the loads that we're going to run. Right, right. You've got to make a list of all of the electrical items. And you've got to figure out how much electricity they're going to be using. Now, it's kind of a process doing this, so I may make another video, and I'll make it available to just the workers. It'll explain exactly how you do electrical budget, how I did it for my boat. By way of summary, you list all the items that use electricity, and then for each individual item, you have to go and look up how much power it actually consumes. This will be listed in the manual for the item or maybe online. It'll either be in watts or it'll be in amps per hour. Once you have that information, you can kind of extrapolate how much you're going to be using that item, how many hours in a 24-hour period, and then that number tells you how many amps per 24 hours you'll use for that item. When you total up 
all of that usage in a worst case scenario that's going to be the minimum amount of amps per 24 hours that you need that number is going to be the minimum size of your battery bank in my case it's just under 600 amp hours so i'm going to go ahead and probably get two 12 volt 300 amp hour lithium ion phosphate batteries as of this date the only chemistry that makes sense for lithium batteries on a boat is going to be lithium ion phosphate i just want to take a moment and say if you enjoy this channel if you get what i'm doing at motor city boatworks do me a favor and subscribe Hit the like button and spread the word about Motor City Boatworks. This channel would not be possible without your support. Thank you. Now, there's lots of information on the internet about these type of batteries, but suffice to say, lithium batteries can be discharged further, charged faster, and they last longer than, say, flooded or AGM type batteries. They really are a great solution for long-term cruising, but they do present some problems. Lithium batteries are relatively new technology and not all equipment is compatible with them. Some of the things I planned on a number of years ago, well, they're no longer applicable with the advance of lithium batteries and the lithium technology that can be used in a marine environment. I had a number of components, a couple of pieces of equipment that were some of the best that were available a number of years ago, and now they're almost obsolete if you're doing a lithium install. I'll give you an example. I acquired a 120 amp high output alternator. It's a Balmar alternator. It's a, it's a very expensive piece of gear. It's only been used twice. It's one of my Craigslist finds, but it turns out that this is not the alternator that'll be used on the boat. It'd probably be used in another application. Along with this was a Balmar regulator and smart gauge but these items, they're not used with lithium. They tend to be used only for flooded batteries, AGM batteries. And while I may have something like that on the boat to service the engine and things like that, well, it makes more sense to have, you know, one regulator that can do a bunch of things and one alternator that can do a bunch of things. So some of these items are now obsolete. Maybe obsolete's the wrong word, but they're obsolete for my build because there'll be other more efficient opportunities to use different gear. So I'm going to have to get rid of them, sell them off, or maybe I'll recycle them and use them in a project that I'll work in down the road. This brings up another one of my boat restoration rules. Avoid buying boat equipment too early. A lot of times you think you're getting a great deal on something, but you end up having to modify your plan, adjust your plan, buy extra things to make your plan work with this discounted item. It just doesn't make sense. One of the disadvantages of lithium batteries is that they are very susceptible to temperature. They're really sensitive to heat. But now I've got a different problem. Where do I put the batteries? And where do I put the electrical panel? It didn't take long for Bob to give me some very frank feedback on my plan to put the batteries inside the engine compartment. Because the lithium batteries are sensitive to temperature and it really affects their performance and lifespan, the batteries have to be moved out of the engine compartment. After all the discussions about designing the electrical system, where to put the electrical panels and all this sort of stuff, basically we come to the point where I realize that I can't keep the batteries inside the engine compartment, right? They have to be moved someplace else. So I'm thinking about moving them to the starboard side cockpit locker. There's a lazarette here, top opening. It's a very deep space. There's lots of room in there. I can put the batteries, all the blue Victron equipment. I can run all the electrical on the starboard side of the boat here. The space underneath the cockpit here in the pocket trawler is open. There's a giant diesel fuel tank that goes underneath there. The whole space is open. The lazarettes open all the way across underneath here. Let me show you. The lazarettes open up uh, underneath here you can kind of see all the way across to this side here right now in the middle will be the diesel tanks if we put the hot water tank on this side engine exhaust on this side we can put all the electrical gear over here this will become the electrical locker we'll be able to put batteries inside here and mount some of the Victron blue gear all this kind of stuff 
the bulkhead that I came up with for the aft cabin, that very easily unbolts and moves out of the way. Okay, no problem. But that's not the only problem. There's a problem with the panel location also. If you've watched some of my previous episodes, I've talked about where I'm going to put the electrical panel on the boat. I've talked about some of my ideas for the electrical components and how the systems are going to work together to charge and maintain the batteries. But a lot of this was really just kind of my wants and wishes. Some of these ideas weren't 100% fleshed out. And now as I've begun to kind of figure out what my plan's gonna be, well, some of my original ideas, well, they just don't seem to be working out. If you've been watching my channel, you know that I've done several episodes about where to put the electrical panel inside the pocket trawler. I thought I solved the problem by modifying the bulkhead in the forward cabin, but I've determined that it's not going to work. Because of the size of the battery banks and the size of the new alternator and the solar panels, there are certain size wire cables that have to be run certain distances within the boat, impacting where the electrical panel can be placed. Aside from all that, I have so many electrical loads and the system is really kind of complicated. There's not enough room on the forward cabin bulkhead to fit all the circuit breakers and switches. So the bottom line is the 120 volt AC panel and the 12 volt DC panel and the battery switches all have to be moved and there's only one place to put everything. There's only one spot big enough that's centrally located and close enough to the electrical locker and that's right at the helm behind the steering wheel. After a lot of discussion with Bob, we agree this is the place to put everything. This space is large enough to fit a combined electrical panel. It's also deep enough to accommodate all of the wiring, all the bus bars, all the fuse blocks, and everything that has to go here. It gets me to an electrical panel at the helm, very convenient, very close proximity to the smart plug on the starboard side of the boat now. And I think everything will fit. I, I, I think this will work. While creating the electrical locker and moving the electrical panel to the helm station solves a lot of problems, well, it also creates its own challenges. There's a number of things that have to be done in order to use the electrical locker in this new position. There's a number of things that have to be done in order for the electrical panel to be everything it should be at the helm station. First, the electrical locker has to be closed in. It has to be separated from the rest of the boat and the engine compartment, the bilge. It's got to have its own space so that the temperature can be controlled inside there. It's got to have ventilation. It's going to need its own airflow. That space has to be closed off somehow, and i got to figure out a way to do that. Second, the shore power plug is on the port side of the boat. And now that's got to be moved to the starboard side in a position that gets it close enough to the electrical panel. I think putting the electrical panel at the helm station is a good idea, but I've got to make sure that everything is going to fit. In addition to all of the navigational gear, the switches, variety of different things, well now I've got to make sure that I've got room to put this monster electrical panel. And perhaps the biggest challenge is the electrical locker because it's going to contain the batteries and all of the Victron electrical components. ABYC rules say that the batteries can't be in a space with fuel fittings or fuel tanks or anything like that. And wouldn't you know it, inside this starboard locker, right above where the batteries are going to be, is the diesel fuel fill and the diesel vent. These items have to be moved beyond the next bulkhead, probably into the engine compartment somewhere, so that the hoses can be brought down to the fuel tank and be in compliance with ABYC rules. Oh man, this is going to be so much work. I wanted to make this episode to kind of bring you up to date. More importantly, I wanted to show the thought process and some of the problem solving that goes into doing a project on this sort of scale. I know YouTube makes it look like boat restoration and boat building is all about fiberglassing and grinding and maybe painting the hull of a boat. But trust me, there's a lot more to it. Once you get past the initial building and fabrication stage, well now you're into a whole nother arena. I've got to get to work on making some of these modifications. I'll be back again soon with another episode. We'll continue talking about installing the electrical system in my pocket trawler. I hope you stick with me. 
I want to thank you for stopping by. We'll see you next time. Stay motivated.